Hey guys, Tyler K here. I'm re-recording my intro because I stumbled over my words a few times. If you haven't checked out my concise breakdown of the Brian trailer, go ahead and check that out top right corner for a link because they'll be much shorter than this video where we cover everything, including speculation regarding the direction of Brian as well as the game as a whole. Otherwise, like usual, everything shown can and might change by final release date, so anything I might actually get right now might not be correct in the future. And finally, the Combo Breaker Alpha Test was the final Alpha Test, and today on the Steam database there was a recording of the closed network testing as to whether that might be an open beta test for everyone on Steam or for a select few is yet to be seen, but it's very exciting times because we might actually get a hand on T8 sooner than later. Starting off, uh, we had seen the 4021 into Sway as mentioned. Uh, 4021 into Sway or any sort of like Sway additional transitions that Brian has is going to be like a really big deal. So uh, now imagine, you know, uh, down 4021, let's assume it's still plus eight. Uh, then he enters into Sway and then he performs this, this Sway one option, right? So not only do you take chip damage, then you're slight plus, but if uh, presuming everything else remains the same, and we've already seen Sway 4, aka Soccer Kick, so presuming everything else stays the same, uh, the fact that he's going to have like a, a plus eight into like the low Soccer Kick, which is then gonna be a counter at knockdown, guaranteeing Oki, which then guarantees uh, a full taunt if you tech into it, very, very, very dangerous. Sway 1 though, um, I didn't talk about it too much, although it is shown up twice in the trailer. Uh, but from the frame data here, so we see Sway 1. Uh, Jack tries to rebut with down forward 2 on 15. Uh, and then Brian interrupts with a forward 2. So uh, assuming the down forward 2 uh, is uh, like a frame or so off. So he's probably at this at this like animation. I would imagine maybe three frames off. Uh, so the Sway one is, is plus three. So we talked about a four top right corner uh, or regarding video number three frame data. Plus three is one of those uh, frames where the opponent can no longer essentially mash out their power crush option. Instead are going to have to like do a duck shab or evasion and whatnot, right? So uh, interrupt here clean against the four two one. So clearly plus, but roughly um, just kind of spitballing it about plus three. Okay, knockdown and now basically causing auto taunt. Uh, so as we talked about, the auto taunt uh, generates essentially what's called TNT. Uh, TNT is the stance name for Brian, and from TNT he has uh, three moves thanks to um, Twitter for reminding me, uh, Mr. Brown Man specifically. Thanks for reminding me that he actually does have a charge up back one plus two version that it does like the Agent Smith infinite punch and you'll know, show GIF here, uh, ending with the two rather than ending with, I think the three option. One thing I didn't note um, is that while entering into TNT does, you know, by performing taunt take like, I don't remember exactly how long it takes like, what is it about a, a second? I believe it's like 48 frames plus 34 or something like that. So about a second and a half, there is a difference in the, current difference is when you pop rage drive Brian will automatically enter into into taunt and you can actually cancel that taunt sooner than you can cancel the standing taunt into TNT so usually you'll see people do rage drive charge taunt TNT forward forward four auto you know causing spin and then the TNT forward forward two so he already has a cancel in it the problem is you really can't access it anywhere except from Rage Drive, to the best of my knowledge. There might be another like esoteric kind of situation that he can do it, but for now he can't. But the fact that they're adding it for Brian, you know, very similar to Claudio, very similar to what the, the, the um, what's called the uh, Asuka bully stance and stuff like that, very big difference versus, you know, the, the fact that we go on from one character to at least two characters, maybe three characters with a very similar mechanic. Also, um, I guess we'll get to it later, but the fact that he is a like um, a brawler character, so he's a power character just like Paul, and Paul's like unblockable wall crush seems so much slower than Brian's. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it in a little bit, but it's kind of strange how how fast this character really is. 
you know, if you watch my breakdown in slow motion and we're watching this at like 25% speed, right? He seems like a normal character, but when you're watching him at full speed, and we'll, we'll kind of go through it later, he is really, really fast. The ability for him to apply pressure and maybe do some like crazy, crazy stuff at like really executional, like you can't react with speeds is really, really bonkers. But yeah, I, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll watch it at full speed uh, later on. Okay, so sidestep one, obviously non-natural hitting launcher. That doesn't mean that this isn't like a counter hit launcher. Um, I think everyone, you know, same thing. No one said it specifically, but I'm still inclined to believe that's probably a counter hit launcher. So up forward four, presumably, uh, obviously means that is the end of our uh, orbital presence, likely. Um, I can't see this being up forward three plus four. Um, obviously in the trailer, we already see up four three. So knowing the natural moves and just limbs and stuff, we can kind of figure out what moves are what moves. So yeah, I mean, I'm not very angry if orbital is gone. Uh, what would make me mad is if this move actually is up forward four and then the perform orbital, he still has up four and like up four with Ryan is like infinitely better than like advancing orbital because it's harder to hit him and yet it still has like a tremendous hitbox. Um, it's kind of something similar that they had with uh, originally with Josie, but they did nerf Josie's version, but Brian's version still hasn't been nerfed. So it is difficult to counteract like a, a normal, like neutral up four meta, especially cause like recovery is kind of strange. So it's tricky. So I'm not really crying if they get rid of orbital. I think Orbital has been terrorizing long enough, and go, seeing as how this like game is supposed to be, you know, quote unquote aggressive, I, I'm, I'm I'm okay with him losing a, a safe launcher. It's not like he doesn't have a million counter like launchers, right? So, okay, up four obviously goes into taunt. Keep in mind, let me like this, uh, let me do this th and then do this. So like, look at this taunt. He had, what like what is that like a third of a second at most? for him to enter into stance. Like even when Claudio does his, uh, there's still like notable, like noticeable delay on the actual entrance into uh, Starburst or Orosetta. Like this is really fast, like really, really fast. Okay, so forward to one, this is something I didn't talk about. Uh, so obviously um, I talked about how forward to one now has an extension that very similar to like down two into three, and then he goes for the mock breaker. Uh, what I didn't talk about though, is like the implication here. So. Um, we did mention that Taunt itself is basically a clean plus 16, and forward two specifically hits on 15. So if you were to perform a Taunt and you were to have like TNT, uh, you could perform a forward two one four, and then you know sorry a forward two one uh, two variation instead. Uh, assuming maybe well I guess we've seen it, but uh, yeah you can do this off of Taunt, and then you can spend your um, I don't even call it your TNT gauge to basically do this incredibly damaging combo. So basically there are uh, three or four grounded hits with four, two, one, two, three. So that's a fourth hit is now airborne and to mock breaker. So like this probably does a, like a tremendous amount of damage. So while you can perform this on taunt off of taunt and then obviously, you know, assuming this, the, the mock breaker still causes wall splat, um, will be, be very strong. But we have to rewind a little bit. So he can ready perform a forward two one four off of taunt. But the difference is um, is that when he's in TNT and he performs forward two one four, and the opponent blocks it. So let's say you do taunt, you either mistime taunt uh, or you mistime the forward two follow up. Right. So once again, two frame window. You miss the two frame window. You perform the forward two one two presumably here with Brian. Um, or in I should say in T7 and in, in insert footage here, 4214 out of TNT on block automatically has him go um, enter into taunt stance against where he is forced to regain TNT. So I believe the frame data is like minus 80 or something. So like if you miss the taunt line and you go for the 4214 off TNT and you, like I said, you miss it, you die. So there's a very good case or very good chance that this will be the same again. Like if you misconfirm your taunt, commit to four or two, and you're in TNT, that it's launch punishable. So there is, while a, a really tremendous upside 
to this idea, there's also gonna be a gigantic downside that really can't be overstated. With that being said, that's assuming that T8 follows T7 rules and it's gonna keep that same property. Who knows? I don't know for a fact, you know, so. Okay, yeah, obviously uh, down for two with, with uh, Jack minus 14, Shadow per 14. Uh, Paul, or sorry, Jack does have the extension, but I believe the extension is kind of like a uh, Python explosion where if the downpour two um, gets blocked and he goes for the extension, you can't like get killed by the extension. So I think it's just like you can punish it regardless of him doing the extension or not. Also, maybe you can't even do the extension on block. I don't know enough about Jack, but yeah, Jack does have like the up two or whatever extension uh, or up, up one extension, I think up two is his elbow. Um, but yeah, same the same thing. Okay, this is by far, I don't know how to put it, the most understated possible buff in the world. Ord 1 plus two becoming a power crush is absolutely absurd. So, for what does forward 1 plus two do? Ord 1 plus two is a high, it um, knocks down, Adding a power crush, uh, so one of two things really quick. In case you don't know, in, in T8, when you are uh, performing a power crush, as you armor through attacks, your attack, um, like the power crush itself, tends to be safer. So while you might do a power crush that's minus 14, and they mash through you, um, and then you do a power crush and they block it, typically will block will push them very, very far away from you. So power crushes are, are really, really strong in T8. And I, I don't think people understand like the real implications of one, that you can't kill through armor, and two, that they become safer the more damage they take. Absurd. But um, apart from backlash, this is going to be the only pro plus frame um, power crush. So in its current state in T7, Orbital plus two, I believe is minus seven. It's, or sorry, it's plus seven active for two frames. So let's say in T7 or T8 specifically, you attack Brian and you make his power crush basically safer, or in this case would be more plus frames. All of a sudden that plus seven might actually become plus 13, might actually become plus 14. Now I don't think the frames are beyond G, but this is the first case of a move that will clearly be different by having like damage modification on it. So maybe that plus seven, what is plus seven currently, will actually not be a plus seven G or plus seven S, but will be a clean plus 13. Let's say, let's say craziest case scenario, it's more than that, but whatever, I'm not gonna speculate that high. But let, if, it's a, if it's like a clean plus nine, plus 10, like that's gonna make things crazy. And it's to the point where, uh, you know, you're gonna be forced to hard commit to duck. Now granted, you might argue, okay, well, this is going to be the same boat as current Brian 442, where you're constantly stepping right and you're constantly reading high, shit, right? Sure. The difference now, though, is that it's plus frames and it's an elbow. So it's just like a better version, but now slower. So we'll see what happens when, like, TA comes out. And I presume this power crush is going to maintain that property, where as you take armor it does more things so be prepared if you're not comfortable with like a reacting the four of us two already yeah it's time it's time to start looking into it so okay one check into a back uh, two one four um obviously this has a new animation uh, i also want to like i want to poke out uh, point out that this very much looks like a sway four of course with like a slightly different animation um sway four is a mid but like the other uh, multi-string spin options I assume this is a mid, but I don't know. Like, we still, they, like, the highs look like mids, the mids look like highs. I, I don't understand. I assume all of them are going to be properly made mid, but I, I don't know. It's just a bad taste in my mouth for sure. Okay, and now we see uh, Crouch Dash 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I'm glad that Crouch Dash 2-1 is gone. Crouch Dash 2-1 was a um, buff that they added. I don't know if it was Season 2 or Season 3, but it was around the same time where they decided to make characters have like a million and one super good options. Crouch Dash 2-1 with Brian uh, does one less point, uh, less damage than his uh, power splat, like the back 2-2 uh, two, two line or whatever. Uh, back 2-1 or back to one four one two I think. 
Um, yeah, so it does one less damage. It's two less hits, yet gives superior like um, upward carry uh, as well as on uh, superior Oki. So where you do one more damage, you po push the opponent across the screen. Um, you now do one less damage and have like the godlike Oki that Brian is so much stronger for having. So thank God. Like uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not really a fan of the CD22 because if as you notice. Um, this doesn't look like a rolling, like a bound state. So this actually still grants Oki, but no longer gives you the carry. Uh, same thing we'll later we'll see CD24, which gives you spin, but doesn't give you carry. So again, uh, while I'm not really ha happy about like being like left right next to the opponent, you know, if or Brian when I'm, you know, if you're playing on Jack here, um, but at least they got rid of that. Uh, no more. Oki and carry with like barely less damage. Now you have to actually take one or the other. Okay, yeah, so I, I already did a, I did a major breakdown on this, but there's one thing I did not talk about. So first things first, um, he is in TNT. Uh, once again, we have the Heat Engager. So Jack takes chip damage, and we saw this in the Jack trailer, and it was never explained, but we have the red glow. And we have the, the targeting uh, emblem here. People were saying that this is relative uh, to Brian. I don't think this is relative to Brian. This is very much uh, a Jack mechanic. So, story time. Ever since, like, uh, at least T3, they might have even been Tekken 2, whenever you laser a, a robot, they actually have a special animation where they do, like, this air, like, they do this flex, and they not, not only do they. Well, I guess they take the same damage, but then they recover health instantly. When Jack is uh, getting affected by like heat mode here, right? And has chip damage, like recoverable gauge. I'm wondering if that allows him kind of similar to, I don't know if you guys have ever, ever played like a Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, but Nova. Nova is able to spend his red health to have like charged versions of attacks. And depending on how much you know recoverable gauge Nova has and burns, uh, his uh, attacks will be supercharged. So he'll do like, um, we'll grab an extra pulse isn't a good one, uh, but he'll do like the shield and the shield be tiny. But if he uses like half his meter, like half his health, the, the shield is like full screen. I have a feeling this can be something like Jack. Jack can spend his recoverable gauge and get access to this. Of course here, uh, we see him do like the Gigas uh, stand for, which is kind of similar to like Marduk back for um, but also, I, if I remember correctly, uh, this is very similar to his, uh, what's called Savage Howl stance, aka Flex stance, 4. So I don't know if that means that he just has instant access to Savage Howl without entering into Flex stance, like he can pop meter and just do an instant attack, or what. So a couple of, uh, a couple of things here that, um, um, thanks for, uh, I can't remember who said it, this one, my apologies. But yeah, I, I do kind of agree with this theory. So we have the QCF 1 plus 2, negative option. I think the, the back 4 and stand 4 variations are 14. So realistically, Brian here only has like two frames for him to activate his, his attack. In that case, maybe look about four frames. But the point stands, four frames, nowhere close enough to six or eight frames, uh, technically six frames for 442, but nowhere close to six frames for him to activate his power crush. So, is when he performs this, is this a just frame, or is this actually a, um, a Kazumi slash, uh, what's she called, um, Zafina style reversal power crush? It, it's really hard to say. So maybe because he's in TNT, um, kind of similar to like a Raven uh, just frame reversal, is this just a symptom of a just frame reversal? Is this a symptom of a proper uh, power crushing reversal or what? But um, I did notice this, but I did never mention it because I, I really didn't dawn on me. I just presumed it would be high. But if you look at like the trajectory of the attack and wow, that's really fast. Am I on, I'm on point four, right? So yeah, that looks like a mid. So this mock breaker off of heat um, is a mid mock breaker. I mean, look how low he's hitting here. So is this a proper reversal? Is this a just frame reversal like Raven has? There's a million and one questions and I just don't have the answer. 
Um, and then it was like, it's just too much to talk about in like a really short video, uh, which is why we do talk about these in the longer videos. So, but yeah, that, that looks like a mid, like straight up. I mean, I mean, look, look at his knee. Like this would be normal height right here, right? That has to be a mid. Oh, but here, it, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of things we just don't know about. Okay. Uh, 332 being, um, a spin, not too surprising because we later see that just for, or sorry, Jennifer by itself is a spin option. The high splat, I mean, look at that. I mean, Brian's already recovered. Uh, and then we have like the Jesus Cristo here. I thought that was funny too. Uh, and then follow up uh, into uh, what, uh, once again, I believe to be a new uh, down back two series. So this is machine gun punch, but with the wrong arm. Contextually, he's coming up from below, almost like a fisherman slam animation. So honestly, I wouldn't really miss if down back two, down back two as it stands, has always been like a really good move. With Brian, it's one of those attacks where if the opponent just wants to disrespect you, yeah, you can kind of throw it out for free. And then on hit, uh, it's like something ungodly, like plus 10 G or something like that. I don't remember exactly. I'll, I'll put up the stats here, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, it's always been good. But now having like an extension to it that acts kind of similar to like Fakum Lom down back two, not not the worst thing in the, in the world here. So we have the down back two series and machine gun with the right punch series, uh, and ending with the uh, you know advancing knee. Um, same thing. I didn't talk about it, but that's the new uh, low slump wall splat animation. Um, yeah, we saw that a couple videos ago, and more and more um, Namco is confirming that that's that's the new animation. So. They're in low slump, so it tells you, hey, you got a low slump attack. And maybe the Oki might be a little bit different. Really can't say for a fact. Okay, we have the special intro between Paul and Jack. Or sorry, Paul and Brian here. They both mock punch each other. I think there was like a Tekken Tag 2 animation, same thing. Old, old rivalry, you know, the more special animations, the better. It definitely gives more character to the game and... Spices things up, so nothing wrong with that. Okay, back one getting this Mondo flip is very interesting. It's interesting because when like Paul hits the ground here, this might be a state where he's forced to go for a low option. Now I don't know if if he performs like what would normally be a down back two here would properly loft um, Paul or what. So I, I think the down three plus four is a hint that you know this extension the the speed that you can actually hit the opponent afterwards is like pretty well i don't know if strict is the word i'm looking for but like for instance currently you can do a counter at down back one and depending on how off axis you are you have time to sidestep realign and then do a down back two i don't know if it's going to be that way also similar to the uh oscar trailer or the lily trailer i think is more accurate um, I think this type of sp uh, spin, is, or a stun rather, will be self-aligning. So let's say like Brian's already off axis. This might actually realign automatically. So not only does it make it easier for like a beginner player to combo, but then that would also give credence to the fact that Brian is forced to do a, a specialized option for follow-up. Um, this wouldn't be the first time that Namco's done this, where they made combos that require uh, a really you know special line. Uh, immediately come to mind being a Dragonov player, uh, Dragonov in T6 was just like this. Like, his wall stand 2 required a completely different combo structure than everything else. So I think this is going to be in, in that sort of same vein. Yeah, apart from that, really not much to talk about here. Uh, very boring combo, to be fully honest. Heat burst, he goes for like the overhead slam, two frame activation sort of thing after the animations occurred into a standard 3-3-4. Three, three, Considering how like technical the rest of this video is, like that was like super fucking boring, but whatever. No the here nor there. Okay, so he sidesteps the 442 delay one. Um, and then we see the new sidestep two one. Obviously, once again we see that so sort of fisherman slam animation. Uh, but here's the more important thing. So not only is this a heat engager, but if you notice the animation, this is forward one plus two. So that means sidestep two one's a high, mid-high, presumably non-jailing. Uh, the fact that sidestep 1 is a non-launcher and now sidestep 2 1 is a heat engager means that the Namco is naturally trying to make people do sidestep 2 1. That way, A, you can get heat 
and B, if you are already in heat mode, you can heat dash cancel to make this into a full launcher. So that's going to be a big deal. Take away the um, safer, like sidestep one, and force Brian to go for a riskier sidestep two one option instead. So that's the that's a big thing. Almost certainly non-jailing, and this is a high. And oh yeah, we'll talk about uh, the importance of these kind of quicker uh, heat engagers in a little bit as well. Okay, we see the full 27 frame taunt into the 16 frame knee. Um, this is identical to the up forward four we saw earlier. Also, I don't know if people saw in my first video. Yeah, I have. I, I typically do like frame counters. So you can see exactly the, all the frame data or the moves. So just, uh, yeah, this is 16. I'm, I'm not speculating. This is a 16 frame uh, mid. And of course, 16 frame is the taunt fully sort of stuff. So, okay, we get a canned animation. This might be truly canned. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that's obviously his primary up forward four heat smash. Now the question is, can he cancel up forward four? Or is this just a proper, like, I don't know. I think that might be an actual, actual input, but maybe he's canceling it. Who knows? I can't tell hundred percent, right? Also, we see Brian turn red. That's a, a motif we'll see later uh, whenever he pour, performs his TNT and you see kind of flames here going on. Okay. So, uh, did I, should I talk? Okay. So getting on the topic of um, taunts here. So I alluded to this, but for people who don't know, so heat engager is this where, you know, instead of getting a knockdown or a launch or whatever, your character will basically do a standing like wall crush uh, for plus frames. In order to heat dash, you can only heat dash heat engagers and it requires you to have heat. When you perform your taunt and you're already in heat, right? So you do the 27 or 28 plus 16. So you have plus 16 frames for the opponent to get hit. That means you can do a taunt plus 16, back four on 16, back four on hit is plus 15. Uh, from 15, you then can perform a four, four, two, uh, which is technically 14 frames. Uh, you can link two grounded hits of a back four at 100 into a four, four, two at 100 uh, which will then be a standing launcher. So rather than go for a proper just frame off of taunt into jet upper, it might be easier for people to do back four instead, the back four into the um, near just frame 442, and then you heat dash it. I mean, it's it's hard to say if it's better to take two 100% scaled hits into a launcher or take a 100% scale launcher without using a heat dash immediately. I don't know, I can't really say, but we'll see, and I'm sure the lab monsters will find that out. But overall, again, even an option like this, let's say if you don't want to do your executional prowess for your like 50, you know, 16 frame back four into like a near JF like four for two or jet, you know, taunt jet upper. Basically, yeah, down back one plus two is a 15 frame attack. Same thing. Because it's a heat engager, that means down back one plus two can be heat dash cancel. So now rather than have like a just frame launcher you now have a, a two, you know, near just frame, two frame window to perform a down back one plus two into, you know, heat dash. So it, it's going to be interesting, you know, for beginners, you do the, the two frame link or advanced experts, maybe going for either a just frame or just frame plus a two frame link would be better. I don't know. It leaves a lot of like opportunities open for Brian. Okay, this is the big one here. I talked about this. Three plus four no longer causes knockdown, which might be it. Uh, it Maybe it's specific to heat, but I highly doubt it. It probably is an actual nerf. And then Brian performs like the um, TNT charge two version. Um, Paul is clearly blocking. He's defending the block. And then he gets wall splatted. You know how he mentioned earlier how Paul has his own guard breaker attack so what's different with, with Paul's guard breaker is that Paul's guard breaker gives him a clean uh, plus 12. Brian might require a wall kind of like Fakamlam to get these frames. So with Fakamlam, when he performs his own guard breaker, and I'll do an overlay here, of course, if you look at the health, the, the standing combo scaling for Fakamlam guard break is basically 60. So you don't start at 100, 
your combo, you get a wall splat, and that's it. You, you basically deal like 25, maybe 30 damage, and you ba have risked your life. Whereas Paul risks his life, but at least when he gets his 100% scaling, he starts with that down 1 plus 2, and then the scaling goes from there. Brian is probably in the Fakum Lom range, where he needs to take a 60% initial scaling on the hit. So this hit probably already deals 60 uh, scaled, and that, but now with the T8 system, uh, we see the mid combo um, jet upper causing spin. And then this is a little bit, not makes me too happy, uh, but we see down four two one into sway four, causing the flip over. So not only do we have the unscaled hit on the soccer kick here, but now also one of the, not even a, not even that hard, but it takes away some executional prowess from Brian. So prior, he would have to do like back three, crouch dash cancel to down back one plus two for Oki. Now he can basically just mash out an input, down four, two, one, hold back four. And it's gonna likely do more damage than the back three line as it is. So while this character overall has been shown to be like insanely difficult, like this is really, really easy. And presumably, you know, double taunt, you know, auto tracking there is on the table. And man, things can kind of get really spicy really fast. So I don't really know how I feel about that. Of everything shown, I think that's probably the worst thing from like a competitive standpoint that I've seen. Uh, whereas everything else can be annoying, but at the same time, I think the executional prowess is definitely going to hold it back. Okay, so as mentioned, 442 uh, is a heat engager, and hence it is also heat dash cancelable. See the back th 3 into, as I talked about earlier, CD24 um, is now his spin option. Uh, I would imagine without spin, this, look at, I mean, look how close he's left. It's probably going to leave him like this far. So no more of this like really high arcing rainbow attack with like CDT1. You now either spike him or you just leave him right next to you. There's going to be no in between, which is once again, great. It's such a great change. Okay. Uh, he is in TNT. 4 for 2 off of dynamite. We see, uh, or TNT, we see the red color. And then we see like the huge red spark with the blue there built into it. Um, and that's the end of the series there. So yeah, TNT, it, it kind of may be similar. And once again, this is pure speculation, but kind of maybe similar to Asuka who has access to like her bully specifically with heat. I think Brian might be in a similar vein, which means Brian's gonna be a very dangerous character uh, because heat is such a prevalent part of the game that, yeah, I mean, he just might be scary, period, to have, like, maybe a, a heat charge TNT 4 for 2 or, you know, armor through or whatever. I mean, there there's so many possibilities here, and obviously, we're just speculating, so we have no real confirmation. Okay, and then finally, uh, yeah, we just see the Sway 1, counter it launcher. So it's got to be a really good move, so in case I didn't really fully address it, I'll talk about it one more time, and I think I already did, but... The fact that you can do sway four, you know, plus frame sway four into a launcher, plus frame sway three, which would be a knockdown into taunt setup, or possibly even a, um, you know, down back to one into like sway one being a counter at launcher plus three option. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to like just eating an option and being like, okay, I literally have to guess for my life every single time of what I mentioned probably the second least thing I, I like about this character but I don't know it's too early to really like speculate on the meta specifically but it does appear that it's that's going to likely be um the way they're you know Namco's kind of taking the character so okay that will be about it um comments questions concerns uh feel free to hit me up YouTube Reddit Twitch Twitter other than that I will check you guys out in the next video later on